we've both been doing this for a very long time, and you think like, if you have like a great month in the spring, gosh, it's gonna snowball. And, and you know, sometimes it does, you know, it's, well, if you don't have a great month in the spring, I mean, if you're just doing okay, that's cool. But you think like, oh God, this is the year I finally uh, make all the money I need to do this goal or something. And, uh, and then it, it ended and now, I mean, we're all in this together, but it's, it's a challenge. Well, it's unlike anything that I've experienced economically, work-wise, and on many levels. And I think that's the collective panic that we're all more or less in. And I, yeah, I use the panic term rather loosely. Some people genuinely are panicked. And yeah, we all are in this together one way or another. I mean, you know, I, I'm due for Erica and my barber can't cut my hair. You know, we're in, in that much together. And it's like, you know, Starbucks, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, everybody's affected by that. But in a way, that's kind of a cool thing. I mean, in its own way, that it's much like, I remember when 9-11 happened, it, everybody sort of stopped. And, you know, there was a level of, of shock and terror that was totally justified. But there was, out of that came a certain amount of like a communal compassion that people, it did bring people together. And, you know, that is something we had never had uh, domestic terrorism on that scale before. And so that was a new thing for this country. And much like this coronavirus is for not just this country, but the whole world that, you know. And so I think that, you know, it's going to force people to sort of, uh, you know, bend. And I think generally people are doing really good. I think people have done, uh, Washington State's done an outstanding job of social distancing and, you know, getting on track with, you know, the, you know, work at home and social distancing and whatnot. And yeah, it's not been easy for a lot of people. And there are people definitely suffering because of this outright. My wife's job got cut down from full time down to 16 hours a week. All my work from beginning of March through the middle of June is all gone other than some editing jobs. But that's okay. I'm, I'm using the downtime to study and go hiking and snowshoeing. It's like, what am I going to do? Complain about it? No, screw that. But some people aren't, you know, aren't in a position to just be cavalier about it. And yeah, there are people that are suffering. And I think having like a, a constructive outlook, I don't want to just say, you know, cautiously optimistic. I mean, yeah, I think you have to be proactive and constructive. You have to just do something with the time. You can't, like hope is just such a passive thing. I hope things get better. <laughs> Well, of course, hope, but I mean, do something about it. That's much more effective. Yeah, and yeah. And it will, it will get better. I mean, we've, shit, you know, people have gone through world wars. People have lived in concentration camps and, and refugee camps and dealt with earthquakes and Katrina. It's like, you know, by comparison, I'm, I'm doing okay. I have nothing to complain about. I'm, you know, I'm irked about a lot of things. I'm inconvenienced. I'm financially affected, but I I'm not complaining yet. <laughs> right. Give me some time. I I'll get there. You know, our grandparents or whatever generation it was mm -hmm. uh, lived through um, perhaps a depression and World War II. And um, gosh, talk about challenges. I yeah. Mean, this is a little scary because it's invisible. And, you know, I don't want to get too political, but um, there are some questions about our leadership in the, in the country, and that's, that's a, a source for anxiety, I think, for everybody. And yeah, what's happening is a shame. Uh, in, in their defense, I will say that because this is uh, uncharted territory for most administrations and medical experts and blah, 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 and there's lots of debate about this, but all I'll say is that it's easy for people to make like gross miscalculations. And I'm not trying to get anybody off the hook, but I can understand why some people with certain leanings are gonna do the things they do. Whether it's excusable or not is beside the point. They've done them. All we can do is think about moving forward. Uh, from my perspective, again, speaking for the people in Washington State and other states, I think they're spending more, they're, they're putting more belief in, uh, you know, the medical experts and empirical evidence-based science than they are in the political actions. 
And I think that seems more pragmatic to me. And hopefully uh, that'll be a good way going forward. And on the other hand, I also would love to see businesses come back online and get back to work because I know that aside from the, the health aspects of how devastating this can be, there are true economic uh, aspects that are equally devastating for some people. I mean, you can be healthy and be so broke that, you know, your life can be ruined that way. I don't wish either extreme on anybody. And so the sooner we get through this, the better. Right. Well, that reminds me, um, there's, okay, I'm not going to get bluesy, but uh, a number of businesses that operate on a lower margin and they're highly organized and they you, you sometimes go to them because they've got a good food for a good price or some some piece of art that you really like and related to that is um, families and individuals that um, may have a lot going for them but they don't make a ton of money and those businesses and individuals are getting hit really hard right now and like you hope like can they please go back to work within a month or two? I mean, I, yeah. I want to be back to work within a month or two, um, but that remains to be seen. You know, I, I think a good question would be how many businesses that you can think of are not being hit really hard right now? I mean, there's obviously certain services that are doing well. Like I just saw a DHL truck drive by. It's like, yeah, if you're to deliver stuff to people at home that can't get away, it's like, wow, that's a business that's thriving. But, you know, if you're a restaurant and you're not set up to do takeout, you're basically out of business. And so, or if you work for a company and you've been furloughed or laid off or whatever, um, yeah, there's some people that are just, it's going to wipe certain people out. I remember last year there was uh, a lot of commentary talking about like the average person, or, or not the average person, but a, like a high percentage of people in this country if they were hit with an unexpected $400 bill, would be in a world of hurt. Now, I'm not rich by any stretch, but I can come up with $400 on short notice. And it really hit home to think of like, wow, that's, that's shocking that that many people would be really hard pressed to deal with an unexpected $400 bill, which is not really a small amount of money in, in context of things. And now there's people that are going out like uh, they're figuring what two and a half months on average, people are going to be out of work. And so, you know, two and a half months of no income, that $400 challenge is minuscule compared to two and a half months without work. Or if you lose your job altogether, or if you lose health insurance, or if both heads of households lose their job, or and on, on and on and on. So, yeah, it's a very real economic problem. But again, I, I think that this is the kind of moment that defines ourselves going forward. This is the kind of moment where people can look at data and say, this is where we fell short. This is what we need to prepare going forward. This is how we need to like reevaluate what's important. Um, I myself am probably the epitome of someone who is like, waste too much money, like going out to movies and going out to eat and, you know, pampering myself. And now we're eating at home. Now we're, you know, we're binge watching on TV. But like very quickly, I realized like, yeah, we're saving, you know, a substantial amount of money, just not doing habitual amusement that really yeah, didn't need to. And we're actually eating really, really well because we're cooking all, you know, fresh food at home. And, uh, you know, there's that. Um, I, another positive out of this that I, I think is important to consider is that uh, you hear repeatedly people talking about like the air quality index, water has improved, you know, there's certain po pollution numbers that are way down. And this is over a relatively short amount of time. And I know that, again, with global warming and the environment at, at large can be very controversial to a lot of people. There's a lot of people that really struggle with like how to grapple with whether this is all real or not. I'm kind of hoping that these short-term numbers are the kind of things that can give, again, empirical evidence that people can be convinced by that, like, yes, this is how quickly we can make change happen. Uh, because, I mean, without this 
virus and like reducing the amount of traffic, we wouldn't have been able to kind of do this experiment. We wouldn't be able to experience this change in pollution in such a, a, a fell swoop. And so it's like, take it for what it's worth. It might be worth a lot. Right, right. I mean, the whole, th I mean, it's just, you know, Seattle gets smoggy pretty easily and it's just crystal clear at night and way quieter. Reminds me of Bellingham where I grew up, which was a small, small city. Um, and then um, I didn't see a coyote, but you know, I hear from around the world, there's, you know, wildlife and maybe we can plan our cities um, to live to live closer with nature and um, and do away with smog producing cars and stuff, you know. Um, now, I don't know if you're familiar with the show or um, graphic novel Watchmen or The Watchmen? Yeah, I don't, I've seen the movie. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if the movie was good. The HBO show was very good. Um, the, the, but the key concept is, you know, he's a little bit of a villain, but the one good thing he does, maybe it wasn't worth it, but he drops this gigantic squid on New York City and kills hundreds of thousands of people. Not good, not cool, but it does have the effect of uniting the world to this problem that squids might land on us. <laughs> And um, I just think, like, without getting too much into that particular show, but maybe this is our squid moment, and we can, you know, think about, you know, people in Indonesia are my brother, people in Russia and, you know, name a country, those are my brothers and sisters. Um, people in America, whether you're... Um, right, left, or in the middle, whatever, um, you know, you're, you're in my community and I care about you. Um, and that would be a profound outcome from a very horrifying event. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, and that's why I mentioned the thing about 9-11. I, it was shocking and disturbing on many levels. This is a kind of a much different situation as far as the shock and awe kind of business, but um, I think people are pulling together. I mean, you're always hearing, if you look for them, you're always hearing these great stories of people that are coming to the aid of others that are displaced or need supplies. And you look at the, the frontline workers, oh my God, could you imagine being working in the health industry right now and putting yourself at risk on a daily basis, working crazy hours you know, in the face of you know, a very communicable danger? Um, so there's a lot to be grateful and inspired by. And, you know, I mean, I think there's always been a certain amount of, a certain number of angels that walk among us. There's always been people that have been that way. Um, but we need to be reminded of that. And again, I'll just say again, that's why I think it's not a good time to be fixated on the toxic toxicity of some of the bad crap that you read on Facebook or, I mean, even even some of the news channels now some <laughs> all the news channels you know i mean if it bleeds it leads people love to you know have uh you know get eyeballs on the news but it's like you know we need to sort of think about going forward instead of dwelling on this finger pointing about who did this and who did that it's like it's pretty obvious where things stand uh how do we go forward and um, i think you need to have a compassionate outlook to make change that actually evolves 